In today's video, I'm gonna focus on the spinnerbait and why the spinnerbait beats the bladed jig in certain situations. My goal, of course, on this channel is to help you guys become better bass fishermen, so let's talk about it. Well, how's it going Team TRF? My name is Tyler Anderson and welcome back to the channel. Of course, as I mentioned, my goal is to have you guys become better anglers and I really feel like this video is going to help a lot of people, especially those that really think the chatterbait or the, the vibrating jig, they're kind of interchangeable terms that I'm gonna use throughout the video at various times. Uh, for people that think that the chatterbait and the spinnerbait are basically interchangeable lures. And so of course, in all my videos, I love to dispel uh, myths that people have. I love to talk about biology with fishing and I hope you guys learn a few things today. So the first thing that I want to talk about is my hate for the spinnerbait. Uh, you guys, I guarantee you all you guys have been around the channel for a while and you know that I absolutely hated the spinnerbait. It wasn't just like a dislike or it wasn't a fake thing. For many, many years, it was an absolute hate. And there wasn't really any reason why. I guess I just thought that the spinnerbait was a kind of a lazy man's lure. You throw it out there and reel it back in. Didn't really think that it had any big fish catching potential, that's for sure. I thought it was more like a, a limit filler. You catch one to two pounders on a spinnerbait. But it wasn't until I started throwing it more and I found the situations in which the spinnerbait far outshines the chatterbait. And that is what is pushing me to make this video today. Is that I think in the past three to four years, I've really discovered a lot of situations in my fishing experience that the spinnerbait wins. Uh, over the chatterbait and so I want to talk about those with you guys today. So if you guys are new here please hit the subscribe button and of course if you're not new here and you don't have post notifications turned on turn them on. YouTube does a horrible job of uh, notifying you guys that I have new videos out and if you guys are not on the mobile you're watching on a computer bookmark this page. I have three videos coming out every single week so you will always have new fresh content and of course new ways to better your fishing ability. So most people will say that these two baits here the chatterbait and the spinnerbait are completely interchangeable and that is not true. Uh, I'm going to talk about a few situations here in which the spinnerbait bait far outshines uh, the chatterbait and definitely catches a lot more big fish. And the first of those situations is wind. When you are presented with a windy situation, as I talked about in a video, I believe two or three weeks ago I put on the channel, it'll be linked up here in this corner. Um, wind creates a lot of disturbance, especially on the top of the water, and can oftentimes uh, decrease a fish's ability to find your lure. So when you have chop, when you have current, it just, I don't know, messes with the fish's senses, they can't sense uh, your lure as well. So if you were to throw a spinnerbait in a super calm, still pocket, a fish could sense it from a mile away, but if you had waves, wind, and chop, it would not be as easy for that fish to find it. And I have found in those situations, when comparing these two lures, that in wind, when you have two blades that are chewing water, that are just, you know, creating a whole lot of commotion, a big flashy skirt, and a usually a bigger sized uh, head. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bigger profile lure. And oftentimes when it's windy, the fish cannot like eat your lure. So usually it goes at it and it slaps at it with its head, or it kind of opens its mouth and hopes to knock the, the, uh, the bait fish out or whatever the forage it is that it's eating. And so a spinnerbait does a lot better job of hooking those fish that just slap at the bait because it has an exposed hook and usually a trailer hook. The chat Chatterbait does have an exposed hook, but it's, I, I can't quite figure out why, but I, I hook a lot more fish uh, that slap out a spinnerbait than I do with a bladed jig. So wind is definitely situation number one, one of the biggest situations in which I think a spinnerbait outshines a chatterbait. So area number two in which a spinnerbait definitely beats a chatterbait is in a situation where your fish are eating bait fish. Now bait fish, I'm gonna call bait fish and shad in the same category. So anywhere from tiny minnows to gizzard shad, I have found that a spinnerbait definitely imitates those types of forage a lot better than a chatterbait does. Now the one situation in which that is not true is a bluegill. They do have bluegill spinnerbaits, but I think the chatterbait, just because of usually the blacked out blade or the green pumpkin blade, this here's the, uh, the Strike King Thunder Cricket. I find that this imitates bluegill extremely well, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about bait fish. And so because of the versatility of a spinnerbait, you can have Colorado blades, you can have willow leaf blades, you can have a mixture, you can have a super, super compact one, you can have a giant one ounce spinnerbait with a huge skirt, uh, a, a longer skirt that covers the trailer hook. There are so many more variations of a spinnerbait. You can have ones that are multi-wire, you can have four different blades. The spinnerbait really has endless combinations of blades and size of the lure, whereas the chatterbait usually only has a few sizes. It only has, you know, the, the same blade size with 
you know, the head sizes that changes as the weight goes up, and really the same exact profile that imitates a bluegill. So when you are going after shad, a spinnerbait does a whole lot better job of catching those fish. So situation three in which a spinnerbait wins is when you are fishing in rocks and clear water. I grew up on Lake Travis in Central Texas, and really I fished the whole chain of Highland Lakes. So you had Buchanan, you had uh, Lake LBJ, you had Marble Falls, Lake Travis, Lake Austin, Lady Bird, and Lower Colorado. And all those bodies of water that I grew up around are deep, clear, rocky lakes that usually have a lot of bait fish, as I just talked about in the last category. And so when you are fishing in clear water and rocks, I have just found, this is my personal preference, a spinnerbait wins. Now this is not something that I figured out back in high school. I wish I had. I think I would have caught a lot more fish in high school fishing if I had thrown a spinnerbait over a crankbait, but usually when I'm fishing clear water and rocks, a crankbait is my jam. But of course, this video is not about crankbaits, it is about the difference between a chatterbait and a spinnerbait. Lake Travis, the lake that I grew up on, does have a large population of bluegill, but I have found that those fish are mostly migratory bass that kind of move around and feed on bait fish that are moving around uh, the lake. And so a spinnerbait imitates bait fish so much more than a chatterbait does, and especially in clear water, fish feed based more on sight than based on vibration and, uh, and, and using their lateral lines. So if you guys know anything about bass, they don't just use their eyes to feed. Of course, in super dirty water, a fish can't see anything anyways. If you can't see anything in, in dirty water putting your head underwater, a fish sure as heck can't see it. And so you need something that of course grabs the fish's attention, but when a fish feeds on sight, they actually think as much as their brains can think, they think or look at a lure more than they do in dirty water. In dirty water, something goes by their head, they turn and they eat that thing. In clear water, usually fish kind of stalk a bait for a few more seconds before they eat it. And if you were to look at these two baits in the water, uh, in clear water especially, a spinnerbait just looks a lot more realistic uh, in terms of bait fish presentation than a chatterbait does. And one more thing about clear water is that a lot of fish in clear water suspend. So a crankbait, of course, can catch them very well, but a spinnerbait, one great thing about it, especially for new anglers, is that it is a lot harder to fish this bait wrong than it is to fish this bait wrong. To fish this bait wrong is very, very easy. You can reel it too fast, you can reel it too slow. This bait, of course, you can reel it fast or slow, but if you cast it out there and let's say you're a beginner angler and you're fishing a clear water area, uh, you, you let this thing here, the chatterbait, fall too deep, those fish, you know, the, the lure may be running underneath those fish. And the fish, will, of course, will not go down to eat. They prefer to look up and eat. And so if you have a bait that has a lot more drag, as these two blades provide on a spinnerbait, it is a lot easier almost accidentally for a beginner to fish this lure wrong and still catch fish. Uh, you know, there, there may be a certain area or a certain way to fish this lure better, but in terms of just chunking a lure out there and winding it back in, this thing has a lot of leeway, a lot of uh, forgiveness, could I say, in terms of allowing people to catch fish. So I definitely think a spinnerbait works the best in clear, rocky water. So situation number four, in which I found a spinnerbait is better than a chatterbait, is something that I discovered uh, at Sam Rayburn for my tournament that I got eighth, ninth, I think ninth place at this past year in college fishing and qualified for the championship. And that was at Sam Rayburn, the, the, the lake was super flooded. I think it was seven or eight foot high. The water was literally in the forest. And we found that the fish were super active, feeding on bait fish, and a spinnerbait was the only way to get those fish to bite. And the reasoning for that is because we were fishing around some super heavy cover, some big thick trees, some, some beanie bushes. I don't exactly know what type of bushes we were all around, but it was Imagine, you know, the lake, your lake floods eight feet into the trees. I mean, there is tons and tons of brush, and Garrison and I tried to throw the bladed jig, and it just would not work because it kept getting stuck. And so, both of these, in that situation, could have caught the same amount of fish if that was as weedless as this. When you reel a spinnerbait along the top of the water over any sort of brush, you are almost always going to have more success because a spinnerbait, just because of the way it is, is a lot more weedless. And so I was able to kind of like worm the spinnerbait as I was reeling it in through the trees and through the bushes and definitely helped me catch some big fish and qualify for the championship. So when you are fishing around bushes and any sort of shallow cover, like really shallow cover, the spinnerbait definitely wins. So the fifth and final scenario in which a spinnerbait beats a chatterbait is when you have to fish the lure very, very fast. You'll find times in your fishing experiences when the fish are super active and super aggressive. They're feeding on bait fish, bluegill, whatever it is, and they are absolutely trucking whatever you throw uh, at super fast speed. And you find that you cannot reel fast enough. So the faster you reel, the more fish you catch. And because of the way these baits are designed, I don't care what brand of vibrating jig, whether you're throwing a Strike King or a Z-Man or a uh, Piranha, or I don't even know what other brands are out there, there's tons of them, or you're building it yourself. 
you cannot reel a bladed jig too fast or else it will eventually start to turn over. The blade will not be able to function as fast as you want it to and the bait just won't function very well and so that is when a spinner bait can shine is when you have to reel the bait super fast over the over the water of course maybe you know buzzing the blades on the top of the water creating disturbance that is definitely when a spinner bait outshines the chatterbait so that is the video i hope that you guys enjoyed and of course I hope that you guys found a little bit of confidence in the spinnerbait that'll propel you guys to want to throw this bait even more. My hatred for the spinnerbait is over. It is done. I am done hating on the bait. If I make some merch one day, I may make a shirt, kind of a parody shirt, I'm making fun of the spinnerbait and saying that I hate it still, but I don't. It is definitely an incredible lure that catches some big bass everywhere across the country. If you guys have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and watch those videos that I put uh, in the corners that I talked about. I think I mentioned a few videos about the spinnerbait, and I will also link one with a chatterbait outshine the spinnerbait and that is because we were fishing around grass and the fish were eating bluegills and so with that said we'll see you guys on the next episode of crf